Hello everybody and welcome to a new pre-intro to the videos where I'll talk about what I'm going to be doing and what's coming up. This little loop you're hearing in the background is from my friend Barapscallion, a very talented musician and you can find his links in the description below. Without further ado, let's kit bash a Crimson Fist Ancient. I started out by making sure I had the main bits I needed. Little things like purity seals and relics can come later, but I knew I needed legs, a body, at least one good working power fist arm, and then some options for a secondary weapon. These guys can take power fists, thunder hammers, all of the above, but I'm going with the power fist, clearly because he's a crimson fist. Plus this big open hand from a dark angel kit is perfect for holding a banner. The first thing I needed to do was remove all of the Dark Angel iconography. Now I'm using this old Dark Angel body because I didn't have the patience to wait for the new Terminator kits even though they're absolutely amazing looking. Essentially at the time of recording I have a game in a couple of days with four of my mates. It's going to be a big thing over on Winter's SEO for the Hobbypocalypse Season 3 where we all bring armies and fight each other and I decided for the Crimson Fists at the last minute. So. To make up 1500 points, I needed to make this guy quickly. To finish the surfaces after I'd removed everything with a sharp scalpel, I used a little sanding stick. You can buy these in bulk on Amazon and they're really useful to have for projects like this. Once that was complete, I glued the body together and attached it to the legs with a little bit of a putty. This is going to add a little bit of height because when those new Terminator kits do arrive, there's going to be a massive difference between this old version and those new versions. So trying to bridge that gap just a little bit. Next up was a fair bit of conversion work on the power fist that's going to be holding the banner. The arm was at the wrong angle, even though the open palm was really nice. So I needed to cut it towards the shoulder and then adjust the shoulder itself. So we're holding out a bit further away from the body rather than just awkwardly out front. I often find for this type of cut, a gentle rocking motion as you apply pressure is the best way to get through. It's a little bit like sawing without having to actually saw because with a sharp blade like this, sawing is quite dangerous. Well, not that dangerous, this isn't that sharp, but you know what I mean. Next up was changing the angle of the shoulder joint. This is so the arm was positioned a bit further away from the body. Again, not pointing directly out front or back. I was testing and adjusting fairly continuously and once I was happy, I applied some plastic glue and attached it to the mini. At this stage, the model's looking a little bit odd with his hand just kind of waving, but once we attach the banner, trust me, it'll look fine. The way that I'd made the adjustments on this arm meant that there was a large gap between the shoulder and the body. So I took some of the putty that I used earlier and mashed it into the gap. After this, I used a scalpel to create some ribbing to make it look like the under armor that you'd normally see in the joints of the Space Marines. If you're going to manipulate putty with metal tools, just dip them in a bit of water first, it will stop them sticking. Next up was the Storm Bolter. The new captain that comes in the Leviathan box comes with a rather large Storm Bolter, so I wanted to use this for this guy, again to make him match up with those new Terminators when they arrive. I also took a combi bolter from the Tartaros Terminators kit and made sure that the hand was cleaned up and removed from the weapon. Then essentially it was just a quick hand swap. I was quite lucky to have this storm bolter lying around as my Black Templars captain that I kit bashed recently is a close combat monster and has two close combat weapons instead of this. If I didn't have this I would have just used the old storm bolter and attached it normally. I used the Tartaros Terminators arm that looks like it's roughly pointing a bolter off to the side and attached it. Our guy's doing a bit of a jive at the moment, but again, when the banner is attached, he won't look quite so strange. I also decided to add a bit of character flavor and make him a Death Watch veteran, which, you know, is a little bit of fun and changes up the paint scheme ever so slightly. I also sourced a head from the Leviathan box with the spare sergeant head from the Infernus squad. I had a couple of these lying around as I picked up a couple of boxes and this is a really cool looking face and you probably won't see it in many other Terminators. All I had to do was flatten off the base of the neck ever so slightly to allow it to fit. Now before starting work on the banner proper, I'm going to attach our little guy to the base and start cleaning up this custodie's vexilla. Essentially I'm just cutting away the hand with a scalpel and a little bit of clipper work. Next up was a quick dry fit to make sure that everything was going to look right in the end. Now before we go on to this next bit, it's worth mentioning that I probably didn't use the best material for this banner. However, it does turn out really nicely. 
If you're going to use a good material, one I would recommend is a tomato puree tube, that very thin metal. That stuff is absolutely excellent for this. However, as it stands, what I used was this. Essentially, a piece of rubbish. And it turned out really well, considering its only destination was going to be the bin. I cut it up with some scissors and made a nice banner looking shape. Once everything was cut out, I had to make a couple of adjustments as it wasn't quite even, but this was simple to do. Then I made sure that everything lined up with the vexilla at the back and glued everything together. I also cut a crossbar and supporting strut to bridge the gap between the vexilla and the top of this strut out of some one millimeter wire. Before fully attaching everything, I gave the plastic a slight bend to make it look a tiny bit more like heavy fabric, but it still ends up looking a little bit flat. In this situation, I don't actually mind. It's not a terrible thing and it gave me loads of room to freehand on, but Again, take my advice, just use a puree tube, or even if you're feeling up to it, some green stuff with talcum powder. It's a lot easier to manipulate. As the top was looking a little bit flat, I also added this little relic. No idea where it's from, but it's cool. If you play Space Marines at all and you've hobbied with them for any amount of time, you'll probably have tons of these little things hanging around. Next up, my favourite part of the entire process, adding some greebles all over the place. In this case, some 3D printed purity seals that are a bit longer than the normal ones all over the banner, and then a little relic Crux Terminatus in the top right. After this, I decided to paint the model. However, after the fact, I realised that the top wasn't really looking like it was attached once you couldn't see through it. So I came back in with some plastic card strips that I cut with my scalpel and bent over the top. I painted these after the fact, which is why you're getting a tiny sneak peek in a second of the finished banner. The great thing about plastic card is it attaches with plastic glue. Not in this case, because I'd already painted, but it's such a versatile tool. You should get some. And with that, our banner is complete. I've chucked this little moment in here because the video kind of ended abruptly and jumped straight into the reveal with really no build up. As always, I had a really good time with this one and I'm super pleased with the result. I hope you learned something. If you like the music you're listening to right now, do check out the links below for Brapscallion. I've been Sam. See you next time.